this weekend we begin a new message series that I've called Where is God? The theme is taken a little bit from the first reading of today's Mass, the story of Elijah going to the mountaintop in the first book of Kings. But we'll talk more about that in just a moment. As I was preparing the final message for our last series, God of Big Dreams, I was wondering how people who have little or no relationship with God can begin to have any idea of what we mean when we talk about the glory of God or the power of God or even the love of God. And then I began to wonder, what actually does that mean for any of us as well? What does it mean if we're going to live as a Christ follower? During the early part of last week, I celebrated two funeral liturgies. And even though many of the people who gathered did have some understanding of a relationship with God, I was very aware that there were many in the congregation of both who didn't. What does it mean for them when we talk about resurrection and the glory of God? Now, any of you who have been to a funeral liturgy I've celebrated would have heard me use the phrase, uh, a line from the musical Les Miserables. I say, to love another person is to see the face of God. And then I do something quite simple. I ask people to turn and look at the person beside them. I might try and do that just now. Doesn't God have a funny face? <laughs> what I'm trying to say to people at the time is that God is right here. God is present with us right now. So the people who gather to support those who are mourning are expressing what it means to give and share the love of God. In a sense, I'm trying to answer that question, where is God, by suggesting that God is present when we really witness to love. It might seem simplistic, and in a sense it is, but it's also an invitation for people to be open to the presence of God in their lives, especially at a moment such as a time of sadness. So I thought about the story of Elijah as I was preparing this week's message. He confuses me. Elijah is a man of God, a great prophet, and yet he seems to swing between absolute trust in God and then fear. One minute he's rejoicing that God has empowered him in such a way as to defeat the priests of Baal. And the next, he hears Jezebel is threatening to put him to death, and so he runs in fear. And then I began to think, hmm, he sounds like just like me. He sounds like me at one stage being able to say yes to the love of God, and the next stage, being anxious because of something I've said or done, something that hasn't really been honest about my relationship with God. When we finished last weekend's series with the Feast of the Transfiguration, we heard that Jesus, the glorified Christ, was revealed to Peter, James and John on top of the mountain. And there they were told, that Jesus wasn't the same as Moses and Elijah. He wasn't equal to them. But the voice of God said, This is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favour. Listen to him. We know that God works through the power of, God, power of witnesses throughout life. We know he worked through Elijah and the miracles that he performed. We know he worked through Moses and the power that was present in his relationship with God. But here on the mountain of Tabor, God was saying that Jesus is not equal to Moses and Elijah. He is the risen Christ. He is the Messiah, the Son of God. As I mentioned earlier, Elijah had complete trust in God. But when Jezebel threatened him, he headed off into the desert. In fact, we're told in the passage before today's reading that he journeyed into the desert for a day after he had left Bathsheba and then sitting under a furze bush, wished he were dead. 
But we're told the angel of the Lord came to him and said, you must take food for the journey, you must drink because you must walk for 40 days and 40 nights until you reach Mount Horeb. This story today is where Elijah comes to the mountaintop. His fears and doubts are still with him. But the presence of God is such that something changes. Even though he is hiding, the Lord says to him, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And then in a series of events, there's a mighty wind, an earthquake and fire. And then we're told that the Lord was not in any of those things. But then there came the sound of a gentle breeze. And when Elijah heard this, he covered his face with his cloak, went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Elijah is now aware that the presence of the Lord is not always in the big and the in like big ways, but sometimes he's there in you and simple ways, in the still, gentle breeze. The peace that comes when he stops trying to run, trying to escape, and sits, stands still in the presence of God. Elijah experienced the power of God. We know that this doesn't mean that we're safe for all time, that there will be other things that happen. And we see in today's gospel something similar happening. Passage just immediately before today's gospel is the story of the feeding of the 5,000. An incredible experience that the disciples saw the power of God feeding the people. And then Jesus tells them, he made, we tell that Jesus made them get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he himself would go up into the mountain to pray. Now, if I was one of the disciples after seeing the feeding of the 5,000, I would be a little bit overwhelmed. I would be looking at Jesus and wondering who is this man who can feed 5,000 people? But then they're out in the middle of the, uh, of the lake and it begins to get stormy. And then they see someone walking on the water. We're told that the disciples were afraid. And I have to admit that if I was in a boat in the middle of a storm and I saw somebody on the water, walking on the water towards me, I'd be just a little bit anxious myself. I would be wondering, where is God? In the middle of their fear, in the middle of what was going on, there's a voice that they hear. And a voice that is spoken to us at every moment of each day. Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. That's something that we need to stop and hear because it is the voice of God. In the midst of our trials and tribulations, God is with us. As usual, Peter the Enthusiast, I think there should have been a special um, gift of or genius for Peter, because he's always going to do the unexpected. Peter jumps out and says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to walk or come to you. And of course, Jesus says, come. Into the water he goes. And suddenly realises that you can't walk on water and his fear his doubts surface immediately and it begins to sink. And so then his next words, which are the words which we probably use more often than not, is, Lord, save me. Lord, help me. And Jesus looks at him and just says, man of little faith. I'm not saying that Peter was a man of little faith because he dared to believe in the Lord in the first place. It's just that his humanity then came to the fore. But we're told that when Jesus got back into the boat, the wind dropped. Just as in the story of Elijah, God wasn't found in the mighty wind or the earthquake or the fire. But God was found in the gentle zephyr of a breeze that just touched our life. And so often, 
God is found in the stillness of our lives, not in the busyness. So how do we take time to look for God in our life if we stay in the busyness and the rush and the excitement of what's happening around us? Sometimes to experience the presence of God in our life, we need to be still. We need to be silent. I've mentioned this a couple of times at Masses over the last few weeks, but did you know that the word silent and the word listen are the same letters, just in a different order? So we really can't listen unless we have some silence. So I'd like to pray that during this coming week, we might take the time to be silent so that we can listen to the still, gentle voice of the Lord speaking to our lives. And so that rather than rushing around trying to find where God is, we may actually come so that God can find us. As you know, this coming week we start uh, our Alpha series in the parish on Thursday. There are two sessions, one at 12.30 and one at 6.30. Alpha is simply an opportunity for people to come, to sit, to share a meal, to listen, and then to share in dialogue. A place where their questions can be asked without any kind of condemnation or rejection. A place when no question is the wrong question. It's an opportunity for people who are wondering where God is in their life to come and to listen and to experience a relationship with God and with others. It won't answer all their questions. It won't satisfy all their needs, but it provides an opportunity for them to at least ask the question, where is God? And to be surrounded by people who care for them and who love them, who make God real simply by friendship.